Hello everyone. Welcome back. Today we are going to discuss how does communication happen between two hosts on a different network. Okay. Let's say we want to send IP traffic from PC1 to PC2. For example, ping. So PC1 will check whether destination is in same network or in a different network using AND operation. I mean to say PC1 will do bitwise comparison between source and destination and will identify that whether destination is in same network or in a different network. In our example, destination is in different network, right? So when destination is in different network, then traffic will be forwarded to default gateway. As per this topology, traffic will be sent to R1. So PC1 will check R table to find out the MAC address of default gateway. If PC1 knows the MAC address of default gateway, then it will send the data towards R1. I have taken the capture. So source IP address is PC1 IP address. Destination IP address is PC2 IP address. Source MAC address is PC1 MAC address. And destination MAC address is default gateway MAC address. Make sense? Now, let's assume that MAC address of default gateway is unknown. So when MAC address of default gateway is unknown, then PC1 will send R request to find out the MAC address of default gateway. And here is the example of R request. R request is being sent as a broadcast. As a broadcast means it will be received by all nodes in this particular LAN segment, except the sender, PC1. Okay, switch one will receive R frame and will perform basic functions like address learning and forwarding. I mean, when switch one receive R frame, then it will learn the MAC address based on source MAC address of received frame. Here, we are learning this particular MAC address on port Ethernet one by one. Ethernet one by one is part of VLAN 10. And this MAC address is being learned as dynamic. Okay. If MAC address is already known, then switch one will update existing entry. Okay. Now switch one will forward the frame based on destination MAC address. As destination is broadcast, switch one will send it out of all the ports except incoming interface. Make sense? R1 will send R reply as requested IP address is owned by R1. I have taken the capture for R reply. R reply is being sent as unicast. Okay. Switch one will receive R reply on Ethernet one by three and will perform basic function like learn the MAC address based on source MAC address of received frame and update MAC address table. If MAC address is already known, then switch one will update existing entry and will forward the frame based on destination MAC address as 
destination MAC address is unicast and known to switch one. So switch one will forward the frame out of Ethernet one by one. Now PC one will receive R reply from R1 and will update R table and send ICMP traffic. Here is the capture. So source IP address is PC1 IP. Destination IP address is PC2 IP address. Source MAC address is PC1 MAC address. Destination MAC address is default gateway MAC address. And we are sending ICMP traffic. Switch one will receive the frame on Ethernet one by one port and then will forward it out of Ethernet one by three port based on destination MAC address of received frame. Okay. R1 will receive the frame and process it as destination MAC address is owned by R1. Router will take off layer two header and will have a look at IP header. Router will Router will verify header checksum and if checksum is OK, then router will look at routing table to see if there is a match for the destination. And then it will encapsulate IP packet and send it out of gig zero by one. So here the MAC address is zero four is owned by gig zero by one interface and destination MAC address is owned by R2, this particular interface. Okay. Let's understand few things from these capture, like source IP address and destination IP address will never change throughout the path. However, source MAC address and destination MAC address will change as packet forwarded from one segment to another segment. For example, initially source MAC address was PC1 MAC address and destination MAC address was default gateway MAC address. Same way in this particular segment, source MAC address is 004, which is owned by R1 and destination MAC address is 005, which is owned by this particular interface of R2. So we can say L2 header will keep on changing hope by hope basis depending on transmission media. Okay. As packet is being routed, so TTL will be decremented by one. Here it was 64. However, while sending it is 63. Overall, what we are doing at R1. So first thing is we are stripping off the layer two header and then find out the best path based on destination IP address in IP header and then encapsulate IP header into layer two header and then forward it out of exit interface. Correct. This process will be repeated on all the routers. Okay. R2 will receive the frame and process will be repeated. I mean to say R2 is going to process this traffic as destination MAC address is owned by R2. It will take off the layer two header and will have a look at IP header. We'll verify header checksum. If checksum is OK, then router will check routing table to see if there is a match for destination and then we'll encapsulate it and send it out of gig zero by zero interface. OK. This sniffer gives us a lot of information like source and destination IP address, source and destination MAC address, header checksum, TTL, 
total length. Okay. Now let's say R2 does not know the MAC address of PC2. In that case, R2 will send the R request to find out the MAC address of PC2 192.168.11.6 IP address. R request will be sent as broadcast. PC2 will send R reply as requested IP address is owned by PC2. Please keep in mind that switch will perform basic function like learning and forwarding. Now R2 will create layer two header and send the traffic to PC2. Now PC2 will send ICMP reply towards PC1 and same process will be repeated. Okay. Sometimes we say host send IP traffic. Sometimes we are saying it is sending IP packet or Ethernet frame, right? Or frame. It's confusing. We'll discuss about segment, packet, and frame in next in a different session. Okay. Whatever we discussed so far, I have documented that in this particular slide. Please pause the video and go through it. Okay. Please keep in mind that packet will be dropped if root is not in routing table. Also, packet will be discarded if header checksum is incorrect. MAC address will never cross broadcast domain. If ARP is not resolved, then ARP will be resolved first and then only traffic will be forwarded. If TTL reaches to zero, then traffic will be dropped or packet will be dropped. Okay. Hope this session was useful. Thank you.